Hey guys, welcome back. Well, it's been a while since I've done a build. So in this video, I'm going to take this new frame from Rage FPV. It's a two and a half inch frame that I've just listed on my website for sale. We're going to fit it out, chuck in the sky and see if it flies. So let's turn this frame into this. Let's get started. Now with most two and a half inch frames, you'll find it a little bit of a squeeze to fit the digital video system in there. Uh, but this frame is actually designed for digital video systems. So it's going to take a DJI 03 unit easily at the back, as well as the DJI 03 camera at the front there in the full size camera cage. And of course, it will take a walk snail or even the Cadex Vista and full size camera at the front as well. OK, so let's get the parts out and start building. OK, so in the kit, we've got all the TPU parts, a couple of battery straps, cable ties, You've got an adapter plate for 25 by 25 stack mounting, all the screws and bolts that you need and more left over, and of course all the carbon parts as well. And the first thing I'd like to do is just build the frame up and see what sort of spacing we've got for the stack and so on. So we've got a one piece bottom plate here and that's a really good idea. I don't like the, the split deck for a two and a half inch frame anyway because the, the split deck is going to give us less height in the stack. Uh, but this solid plate is going to give us nice, a nice amount of room in the stack. The arms are all identical. So this is a big advantage if you break an arm. Okay, you're buying replacement arms. This one arm will do for front or back. Uh, this is a true X design. If we put the arms down like this, we can see it's a true X, but it's a squished X. So it's pushed in a little bit to get that, uh, that view out the front of the O3 air unit. And the legs have got these cutouts. I think you can see a little bit of the cutout there and they slide together. All importantly, they when you put them onto the frame, they actually don't interfere. You can see the two holes here for the stack mount. They don't interfere with the stack mount. Okay, and then we've got these pieces of the carbon that just go straight on top of the arms there as braces. And we might have a look at this just close up here. And you can see that there's a little bit of a cutout in the shape of a hex nut. And in fact, I put one of the hex nuts in. So with this, you can actually just put the hex nuts in there and they'll, they'll actually fit in there quite firmly. And that's a real advantage because when you're screwing up from the bottom with the bolt, you don't need to get a pair of pliers in here to hold the, the nut on the top. You can just screw straight into it. Okay, and with the frame built up there, we can see what we've got. We've got the, the camera cage on the front here. And with this design, we have actually got about a four millimeter gap here. It's recessed down about four millimeters here. So that's going to be a good spot to mount uh, peripherals like your, maybe your receiver. I'm going to run my camera cable through there and also a good place to put the capacitor as well. Another part we've got is actually also this adapter plate. So this is the adapter plate for the flight controller. You've got a 20 by 20 mounting stack here. And this is the 25.5 by 25.5 adapter there. Okay, so that just screws down onto the frame and allows you to mount either mounting pattern. And that brings us to the bit out of the frame, the motors, flight controller, etc. Now, I've actually already built this frame and tested it. So I'll take you through the components I'm using and the selection motors I recommend. Okay, and the first thing is the video unit. I'm using the Cadex Vista here. Now, normally I'd use a naked Vista, but I'm actually going to use this encased one here because it's going to be a little bit more similar to the weight of an O3 air unit. Uh, it's going to be probably about 10 grams shy of an air unit, but uh, I'll leave this one cased up uh, just to get a comparison of the weight there when we're flying it. And of course, I've got a full size camera, 19 millimeter camera here. Next is our flight controller. So I'm going with the JHE MCU. This one here is the GHF411 version, and it's a 25.5 by 25.5 mounting pattern. And I'm just going to go for this one because actually most controllers out there these days are going to this format, the 25.5 mounting pattern. Uh, you don't see a lot of 20 by 20s anymore. Uh, so we're going to use this in conjunction with that uh, adapter plate there to convert the mounting pattern from 20 by 20 to 25.5 by 25.5. Receiver is ELRS, of course, and we've got the T-mount antenna there. 
And the reason I'm going with the T-mount instead of the, the SMD antenna is because this frame actually has a, a rather convenient little, if I turn it over, a rather convenient little slot here that you can run your antenna out and just put it straight through these holes here. Now for the motors, uh, there's two motors that I've actually tested and both of these motors work very well. So the first one here is the iFlight Zing. This is the 1504 and it's 3900 kilovolts. Okay, so that's one motor. And the other motor that I've actually tested, among others, is this MCG 1505 at 3100 kilovolts. Okay, so either one of these motors will do well. If you're going with the O3 air unit, I'd probably choose this one, the one with the largest state volume. Uh, otherwise, this one here gives a, a great performance, uh, the 1504 3900 kilovolt. Uh, this gives a great uh, combination of battery life and performance too. So either one of these motors will do you well. For the props, I'm going with these. So this is the HQ prop. It's the 2520, so it's a 20 degree pitch. And I'm running these props uh, on both motors, on the 1504 motors and the 1505 motors. I'm using the same prop. Okay, so for the battery, the one I'm running here is a 750 milliamp hour, and it's a four cell. So four S 750 milliamp hour will give the best performance. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is put the mounting bolts in for the VTX. If you don't have one of these electric screwdrivers, you really should get one there. They're great, they really save your arms a lot. So you can tighten it down. There you go, once you finish, just give it a bit of a tighten, and that's it. We're just working from the bottom here. The antenna for the uh, receiver is just going to run underneath the VTX in the back here. So we're going to secure it under this TPU mount here. There, these nuts here give uh, enough spacing underneath the VTX for this uh, antenna to run through here. So, next goes the VTX. Okay, so the next thing is the flight controller. So you can see I'm going to use this void underneath here to, to put the capacitor in. So the flight controller, the only one flight controller is just going to go straight onto the adapter board here. And the, capac the capacitor is going to fold underneath here and go into this little cutout. There's a little void there that's been cut out. I'm going to fold it under there and the capacitor is going to sit down in this area here. the receiver mount I'm just going to use this piece of FR4 fiber board here so this is just like a little sled goes on top there and the receiver is going to mount straight on top of that all 
Right, so there's the completed build. Let's put it on the scale and see what it weighs. And the weight of the frame comes up to 150 grams. I'm flying with a 750 mAh 4S. So if we add that on there, it comes up to 233 grams. So that's quite good. And remember, I'm using the, the Vista unit. If you're using an O3, then your frame would probably come up to about an extra 10 grams, maybe about 160 grams. Okay, so let's look at some flight footage. With this frame, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a heavy frame for a two and a half inch, uh, but that's not always a bad thing. Your mass is, uh, is sometimes quite a good thing in FPV. I'm flying with about a 30 degree up tilt on my camera, so I'm flying at quite a high speed. And so high speed and a little bit of mass gives a little bit more fling ability, and that's something I really like. For the flight time, I'm getting about, about four minutes flight time all up. That's on the, the 750 milliamp hour 4S battery. And I think that's quite adequate. So yeah, all in all, just a, a great frame. Okay, well, that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, happy flying.